Good morning, everybody. My name is Gary Grode. I'm the executive director for the Greater East Aurora Chamber of Commerce, and we're here for our uh, our tenth Real World Careers Meet the Professionals presentation, Zoom presentation, and uh, we're here with uh, Mary Jo Bartran, uh, who's president and CEO of Earth Dimensions here in Alma. And Mary Jo is going to talk about uh, careers and environmental uh, in, in, in environmental consulting and uh, geotechnical and environmental drilling and wetlands. It's, it's a long phrase, and there are a lot of things included in there, but I'm sure you know we'll, we'll get to that in, in a second. But the, the purpose of our program today is, and has been for the last two years since we've been doing this, is to connect students and teachers directly with individuals in various careers and industries to provide a background and a pathway to possible careers in that field. And so we've talked with a, a number of different uh, people in different industries and businesses, and it's, it's, we've gotten really good uh, insights for our students. Uh, and just before we continue, I just also like to thank Absolute Care, uh, Aurora Park of Absolute Care of Aurora Park, and Moog for their sponsorship support to enable us to to do this. And uh, Mary Jo, how are you doing this morning? I'm good. How are you? Good. Very good. Thank you. Uh, well, why don't you first give us a little background on yourself, and then talk about Earth Dimensions a little bit, and then we'll get into, you know, some of the other things and careers and stuff like that, okay? Yep. So I grew up on a horse farm where we trained horses, and I worked around the heavy equipment and the animals, and I was outdoors all the time, and I wanted I cared about the animals and I cared about the farm. If you have a farm, you know that you have to take care of the earth in order for the farm to produce. And so when I ended up getting a job later, I got a job working with animals on a dairy farm. And I wanted to make things better for the animals. And the way to do that would be to help make the people who were working with the animals better understand what was going on. So I went back to college the second time and I got a degree that was a combination degree of biology and media and communications. And it basically was so that I could use technical writing skills through that media and communications to help with educational programs for people involved in the dairy industry. And I got a job working for a large veterinary practice where I was writing newsletters and organizing educational events for people, for large animal and small animal hobby farms and stuff like that. And I worked with the clients and the veterinarians to make sure that people were able to learn more so that they could take better care of their stuff, their animals or their properties. And my husband, is a geologist and he has worked in drilling. He logs soils and he gives that information to engineers so that they can use that technical information to create their reports to build bridges and houses and stuff like that. And we had the opportunity to purchase this company from the man who founded it and we were, we've been here since 2003 working with everything here. So my role here became more of a managerial role. I go out and I work on the drill rigs as a, a drill rig helper. And that comes from my previous mechanical, you know, operating the equipment and everything. But I've also had to take the OSHA courses the safety courses. I write health and safety programs for our job sites and um, basically keep everybody working with what they need to work with, talk to clients, arrange meetings, stuff like that. Who Maybe to give a better feeling, you talked about this a little bit. Who are, who are some of the clients that you have? We do... So we do everything from a private homeowner who wants to put an addition on their house or wants to build a house 
and we have the two parts of the company. So when they apply for their building permit, they will have to make sure that there are no wetlands that are being impacted. And if there are, they have to do an application to the state in order to be able to impact those wetlands. Or it might be an application to the Army Corps of Engineers, which is federally regulated. And we help them through that process so that they're able to build what they want. We can also make rec recommendations on different areas to build. The geotechnical part comes in where they're all ready to build in order to get their building permit. Another part of that is they have to have an engineering report with foundation recommendations in it. So we go out, we log the soils and bedrock and you know whatever they've got going on underneath, and then they can build their house based on the report that's created from our technical information. We also do the same type of work for landfills. We do a lot of work for landfills where we go in, if they want to expand their landfill, our wetland people will map the wetlands that are in the area they want to go to. We create alternate wetlands for people where if they're going to impact a wetland in one place, we can create a wetland in another place that is a better functioning wetland. Um, and we also do the geotechnical work because there are regulations on what kind of subsurface has to be underneath a landfill. Another part of our environmental work is we install monitoring wells around the perimeter of the landfill so that samples can be taken from those monitoring wells to look for any seepage from the landfill. We do um, we do work with the DEC. Sorry about that. That's another phone in my office. Um, the uh, so we also work for the DEC when you have to abandon monitoring well. There's regulations on how to do that properly, and our licensed geologist and um, our certified well drillers are able to do that. Not everybody can abandon a monitoring well. We work on brownfield sites for um, brownfield firms. They go in and they redevelop brownfields and we go in and we, we drill for them. We've also worked on um, major sports places. We have worked a lot on for municipalities for slope failure on roadways. Um, if a piece of the road is falling away, we go in and we do that investigation. Um, we do, we've worked for an airport. We had a wetland study where they wanted to move one of their runways and they had a rare crayfish population in a stream on the property. And so we trapped and relocated that rare crayfish population to another location. And then we monitored it for five years because part of the permit to be able to do something like that, if you're messing with a threatened or endangered species, is that you have to prove that it is successful in its new location. So we did that. Um, that was one of our more fun projects. Yeah. We also did the drilling for the Made of the Mist relocation project where they used a giant crane to lower one of our drill rigs down into the Niagara Gorge. And we had guys drilling right along the Niagara River down there in the gorge for weeks, so. Well, okay, that, uh, very interesting. I get a lot of questions, I hope I remember them all, but to, <laughs> to, to use maybe as an example, you know, for our students, um, maybe it, it this, to go back to what you said in term, at, the, at first, if there's if there are residents who are looking to build a home, yep. can you tell what the process is, and and who comes in and who does what to to uh, address their issues and to to answer the technical to meet the technical requirements that they're needed to build on a lot or whatever it might be, just so our students know what the process yep. is and who's involved in that. So the first. The wetland people that go out, one of them is a soil scientist and the other one is a wetland ecologist. We have more than one of these, but they go out in a team. And part of identifying a wetland is the soil types, the hydrology, and 
the plant life that's that's existing there. They go out with a GPS unit and they map the boundaries of existing wetland on the property and then write a big report that gets submitted to the agencies, whichever agency would be in charge of that wetland because federal wetlands are different than state wetlands. And so we help them through that process and through the permitting process. And then if they get a permit, then we can help them meet the requirements of the permit, whether it involves creating wetlands someplace else, um, a, a good up or alternative is to purchase uh, credits at a mitigation bank. So Ducks Unlimited will allow people to purchase credits in their wetlands and they use that money to create new wetlands. Um, so the soil scientist, he has a four year degree in soils from Cornell University. And I'm not sure that that exact program exists anymore. A lot of the people have been here for a long time. And um, a geologist can also do the same work as the soil scientist, because all they're doing is going in, identifying the soils and the hydrology, which is the movement of the water through the soils. Those getting the approval from the agencies is necessary if there's wetlands on your property to get the building. The geotechnical part is. Excuse when me. Just what the, geotechnical? What does that mean? That means so it's short for geology and technical. So it's going in. We take a drill rig to the site. We collect soil samples as we go down with a a split spoon that gets put down the hole. It gets pulled back out and opened up and the geologist identifies the soils, the soil layers, the soil type and the strength of the soil. So, and they do that all the way down until they hit refusal or bedrock. Around here, we'll hit refusal at glacial till, which is a bunch of rocky hard stuff left by the glaciers. So it's very solid and well, not all the time, but if it's solid enough that it stops us from drilling, then it's hard enough to build on. So we know where the where the depth is and what types of soils are on top of that. The engineer writes a report based on that information to tell the the builder what type of footers to put in or how to put a basement in. If you have really poor soils, you need to have a larger footer which would be a larger surface area over the ground to support the weight of the house. So I don't know how to describe that any better. That's uh, not yeah, no, that, that was good. But yeah. so then can you, you, you talked about some, like the geologist and the soil scientist. Yeah. Now is, is the soil, I mean, you said that degree is not available anymore or that that was a type of, uh, a career that would be a career path in the past, or is that a part of a geologist responsibility now? Or the geology licensure is defined, and soil scientists is everything that a soil scientist does is covered underneath the geology licensure at this point. So, it's, geology became a licensed profession in New York State, like. I think 2019. So they're all fresh on the requirements and everything. And they have continuing education requirements. And your soils is a huge part of that. The soil scientist degree originally was more of an agricultural degree. So people who would go to school for that at this point are probably taking the soils courses in addition to other courses that are useful in um, agricultural support roles where they're going in and they're helping farmers with their crops. Um, and they'll be analyzing the soils, not necessarily, not necessarily for the strength of the soils, but for what's in the soils, like the different chemicals and nutrients and everything so that the farmers can adjust what they put on their field to get the best yield for their crops. So there's not as much of um, 
you're not seeing the soil scientists or soil science as the major at this point. Right. That's more of a stub underneath the geology because of the changes that came in the education. Okay, I'm, I, I may be jumping a little bit, but I guess just so I can understand and maybe if our students have any questions, if, if you wanna submit them to the chat room, please feel free to do that at any time. Uh, but so from what you mentioned so far, that there are opportunities as uh, a, a geologist uh, to work in your field, your industry, they're drillers, uh, operators of machines that, uh, you know, to help determine, like you said, what, what, at what depth are the, uh, is the rock beds so that a foundation can be placed on it. Uh, can you describe some other types of careers too? Or yep. different so that might be in there? The geology degree is an advanced degree. So you're, so that one is, four to six years, depending on how you take it. Um, to be a driller or a driller's helper is a high school diploma and construction safety and different things like that. So you're not starting out with the, the college debt behind you. On the wetland side, I have two types of people here, the wetland ecologists and then the soil scientists. So the soil scientists, that one is going to be part of the geology degree at this point, but you don't have to be a licensed geologist on the wetlands side. On the geotechnical, you have to be licensed, but on wetlands, you don't have to be licensed because it's only the soils that you're identifying. But we have the wetland ecologists who go to school. One of my ecologists graduated with a major in fisheries, and he's the one that did the crayfish study and move. Um, and my other one is in botany plants. She can identify, she can identify like 50 different types of grass. I mean, it's, uh -huh. she's our plant guru. She's awesome. Um, but they, they also do tree surveys and threatened and endangered species. Um, That's it. I'm sorry, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Um, <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> Uh, that's interesting. We do have a question uh, in the chat box, and I'm just trying to find out where we where we are here. Okay. Um, one of the questions are: Are there any specific New York schools that come to mind when thinking about places to get a geology soil science degree? Places that you would recommend? So, there's a really good geology program at UB. Um, and they're, so Cornell being an ag school would have, I don't know how their geology program is because this is so new, the schools are being accredited. Um, they're still working, not all schools are accredited to be able to do the program. Um, but I was just looking at the website, the New York State Council of Professional Geologists they are the people who were behind getting the licensure pushed through in New York State, and they are also approved to provide continuing education. They have a lot of information on there about the professional geologist requirements and degree, and also they have links to places. So they have links to the New York State Department of Ed, which is a really big website. And if you don't know where you're going, it's it's hard to navigate. I used to do the newsletter for the New York State CPG and I was doing it as they were working on the licensure thing. And it was a real challenge to find anything on their website. So I would recommend visiting the New York State CPG website. If you just Google NYS CPG, that'll take you there. Um, and you have to make sure you have the S in there for state or else you get some kind of problem gambling website or something <laughs> like that. So, um, but they're the ones who are, they're kind of the oversight group and they're the ones that help develop the entire program. Um, I know that Geneseo has a good geology program, but 
I would definitely recommend finding the place that has the accredited schools listed. And I'm pretty sure that that is the one that will take you. It's on the New York State Department of Education website, New York State Ed. So I'm not going to find it quickly. I'm sorry. Okay, no, that's good. That's helpful. Uh, now, you said, I, I guess, a couple things maybe along with what Earth Dimensions might have available. J just for, I guess, general discussion right now, you say you have two positions, uh, vacancies open. Uh, what, what positions are those? So I'm looking for a wetland ecologist, and that would be somebody. So for wetland ecologist, a good school for that is um, the... ESF, and I can't remember what that stands for, but it's in Syracuse. So it's, um, I'm going to search that real quick too. I apologize. Um, SUNY College of Environmental Science and Forestry. So that one, we've got a couple of graduates of that school. Um, and they will get you in the field, which is important to get some field time in. Um, as I've been interviewing people for different positions here, I'm really surprised at people not having any time in the field when, you know, to look out for an internship opportunity and you can do unpaid internships or you can do job shadowing, do job shadowing shadowing for a week or something like that just because I've had people who are surprised that you can't do a wetland delineation from home and <laughs> it just you know the, people need to understand if they're looking at these careers that they are going to be in the field all the time yeah. it's you know they have to come back and write reports sometimes but you know this is a field what we do here is all field work so right. um i forgot the question okay well it was, it was <laughs> the two, uh i asked about the positions you have available i think you described oh, yeah. one and you said you you had a second one yep open. so the other one is for a driller and that would be somebody um essentially it's an equipment operator it's just you know running the drill rig you you know you're doing heavy lifting shoveling and uh, all of that stuff. I go out and I work on the drill rigs. It's not, it's not overwhelming heavy lifting, but it's an outdoor job. And, you know, I like it if it's cold enough for any precipitation to actually freeze on the outside of my clothes, because that way that keeps me a little bit warmer, but people don't, you know, when homeowners call us and ask us if we can do their site, they don't understand we can do their site in February and then they can be ready to break ground in the spring. Um, we also have an open opening for a geologist. My husband has a separate company, which is a PLLC, it has to be a professional company in order to have licensed professionals. So that would be a geologist or a geologist in training. We've hired a geologist in the past straight out of college and then took him through the first couple of steps towards licensure. And then he left us to get a different type of um geology experience for the final steps in his license so um that other part the geologist can be somebody who is a licensed geologist who comes in hits the ground running or it can be somebody who is working their way towards their license mm -hmm. um what about internships do you i i don't if you provide unpaid you mentioned unpaid internships or shadowing do you provide those opportunities for interested students or? If we haven't had a request for an internship in about seven years. So if somebody comes, we've done lots of shadowing, which I think that's cool because the people get out there and they get to see what's going on and get a feel for it. And, you know, that's helpful in their make their decision making process. But um, for the internships, we are open to paid or unpaid. Um, typically if it's, uh, if it's an educational 
part of their requirements for their their class or their you know college or whatnot, then typically they're not allowed to be paid for that. But the educational experience has to be specific to what their program is. Where a paid internship doesn't guarantee 100% focus on what that person may or may not be interested in. So, um, but we we've, we've had both in the past. Mm -hmm. With um, obviously, you look for the educational requirements or certifications when you're hiring somebody. But what other kind of characteristics are you looking for in an individual? If if they have those that if they meet the educational criteria, what else are you looking for? So, we like to know that our people are outdoorsy. So, I one of the questions I ask in a job interview is, "What are your hobbies?" And if their hobbies are stamp collecting versus camping, that might be, you know, what are some of your other hobbies? Do you like to mountain bike? Well, there's a good one. And if those aren't deal breaker questions, but those are give me a feel for whether or not the person's going to be a right fit for the type of work that we do. We're a very small company and we have, because we work in consulting, we have very strict requirements here for ethics and for um, confidentiality. I can, you know, the Made of the Mist project I can tell you about because that's already built and, you know, it's not top secret. But a lot of the time we have people who um, we are working on job sites before anybody knows that it is a job site. Uh -huh. And my husband and I have been out drilling together on a site and had a neighbor approach us and say, hey, do you know what's going on here? And we're just the dumb drillers out here. You know, we don't know. We just do what we're told because, you know, we cannot disclose any information. We are. So it has to be somebody who is, we, you know, ethical. Confidentiality is important. We like somebody that's going to fit in with our group outdoorsy, not that we're going out and, you know, having camping retreats or anything like that right. but we just need somebody who doesn't mind coming into the office and they're wearing their jeans and their t-shirt and you know stuff like that we're very relaxed but um the other thing would be like a clean record on their driver's license for the cdl if somebody has a commercial driver's license and they can drive our drill rigs on the road then those people are going to be the ones that um they have to have a clean, uh, clean driver's license in order to keep their CDL. Okay, uh, I have a question, and we we mentioned it before, but I'll just do it just so we can clarify this for for the student. Uh, what is the name of the company you work for? So I work for Earth Dimensions Inc. People get confused about that name, and I have to spell it all the time until they say, "Oh yeah, okay, Earth, like the planet we live on, and dimensions that." comes from us measuring, you know, how deep we're going and all that kind of stuff. So it's kind of a silly name, but it's back from, it was created back in 1977. So we're right. going to run with that. But I, we do have a website. It's mostly an informational website, but it tells much more detail about all of the stuff that we do. And our job postings are on there. Um, and I think the photo gallery is really cool. I just enjoy looking at, I, I do, okay, of course I moderate the website. So, you know, I'm a little bit partial to it, but um, it's fun to look at the pictures of the different types of work that we do because we have little rigs and we have big rigs and we get, my people take amazing pictures and we make our Christmas card out of employee pictures every year. So it's cool. <laughs> Excuse me. <coughs> um, uh, we'll wrap up in a second, but uh, there, there's still a couple other things. What, though, your website address? EarthDimensions.com. Okay. Do you want right. me to spell it? Uh, yeah, why don't you do that just in case? <laughs> E-A-R-T-H-D-I-M-E-N-S-I-O-N-S. Thank you. Yeah. Um, and just me, I, I, out of curiosity for me and, and maybe to give a, a little bit more insight 
uh, for our students. And, and just briefly, the, the two interesting things I thought were one, the, uh, the crayfish uh, project that you had where you, you moved them from one location to another and the drilling in Niagara Gorge. Can you maybe just briefly describe both of those projects and uh, what was involved? Because they really seem kind of cool. Yep. So there was a stream that was on airport property and they wanted to put a runway where the stream was and the stream had a threatened and endangered type of crayfish. I'm not sure it's exactly what the classification of the crayfish was, but I know that it could not be disturbed. So we were hired to go out there. We took a population um, count. We counted who was looking there, how many, um, which involved working at night. So that was unusual for us. But then we created a plan to move them to another stream that would be the appropriate habitat for them. So we had to identify a local stream that would be appropriate habitat for them. And then we went out and we humanely captured them. We did not lose any of them. Nobody got injured or harmed in the moving. And we actually created a unique way of trapping them in order to accomplish that without hurting anybody. And we moved them to the new stream and then we monitored them for five years to ensure that they had a good population and they had settled in and they actually grew. Their, their colony size grew. And so that was considered really successful. And we actually gave a talk on it at a uh, Fish and Wildlife Service um, conference because they were so impressed with the way that that was handled. Um, and what was the other? Oh, the Niagara Gorge, that was fun. So we frequently get hired by a top tier engineering firm in Buffalo that they do work all over the Eastern United States. And they were hired to design the foundation for the Made of the Mist dry dock, which is in a very tricky location. It's in the Niagara River, not far from the falls. The, the water is moving very fast, very close. There's a lot of crumbly rocks that have fallen down off the sides of the gorge over the years. And that's the base that they have to work with. So we went in and we drilled down through along the, along the shore. We had to drill down through and identify boulders and finally able to hit some stable bedrock that they were able to put their, their foundation posts or piers or whatever, whatever their method was, they had to know where that good solid bedrock was. And in order to accomplish that, they had a giant crane, which actually was delivered to the area on 60 flatbed semi trucks because other construction equipment had to be lowered down there as well. And they strapped one of our drill rigs up and lowered it down into the gorge on the crane. We did not ride on um, the drill rig as it went down. But there were windy days when there was no infrastructure in place when we were doing this work because it was prior to construction. So they had a man basket on the crane where the guys had to get into the man basket and then the crane would lower them down into the gorge so that they could do their work. And on the really windy days, they actually got a ride from the cave of the winds. So they would go to work and they would show up there and then a river boat would take them over to the drill rig location. That's so cool. We have great pictures from that job too. Uh -huh. I think there's some on the website. Yeah, well, that's really interesting. Really interesting. Um, well, great. Well, well, thank you very much, Mary Jo. I really appreciate uh, all the insights and everything. I'll just I'll ask one more time if there are any, any more questions, how students, anything? Uh, anything else? I'll give you a second to to ask. No more questions, and thank you. <laughs> Aw, that's nice. Um, okay, so we'll wrap up, and and again, Mary Jo, thanks a lot for for your insights into this. It was really interesting, very interesting, and uh, and I'd also like to thank again uh, Absolute Care at Aurora Park for their sponsorship in Moog. And uh, this is our this this is our last 
presentation for the school year. So congratulations. It was, it, it, you ended it up really well, very well. And, uh, and these do get viewed again by, uh, by the students and teachers. So uh, thank you very much. We really appreciate it. And uh, everybody have a good day. Well, thank you. We're happy to be able to help and people are free to contact us if they want to learn some more. So thank you. Okay. Thanks, Mary Jo.